There are nearly 13 million acres of forest in Oklahoma. Every day, no matter the weather, crews from the Forest Inventory and Analyst Program are deep in those woods conducting critical research. What they're finding is information that's stored deep inside Oklahoma's most remote and untouched lands. Deep in the woods surrounding Cleveland County's Lake Thunderbird, crews from the Forest Inventory and Analysis Program have found where they will create a new research site. Data from the site will be collected for decades. There are 5,700 such plots across the state, most of them in eastern Oklahoma, where the research has been ongoing since 1936. We check in eastern Oklahoma, we check 20% of all the plots in every county it, it, every year. So it's a five year cycle in eastern Oklahoma. In western Oklahoma, it's a 10 year cycle. Carrie Abner is the program coordinator of the program. The information her teams collect is publicly available and is used for everything from economic development to making decisions to keep the forest healthy. For scientific investigation, they do. Um, carbon sequestration studies on that. They do ozone studies and uh, like they, they collect lichens and things for air quality. Once the crew located the spot predetermined by the U.S. Forest Service, they create a triangle of plots and catalog everything inside them. Dieter Rudolph, a staff forester, says this is a young forest. Old uh, pasture trees that were just kind of left over. The stand became forested, went from the ag land and so you'll have a bigger tree that could just be left over from that while everything else kind of sprouted up around it. The process the crews follow is very precise. Forester Joshua Bradley. We'll take a pin wherever the plot lands. We bend it in a U shape. And we'll put that into the ground. And it'll stay there for the next 20 or 30 years until it gets replaced. Just like that. Matthew Ford is a field forester too. We are going to do a fixed radius plot of 24 foot and we're going to start at due north and rotate 360 degrees tallying everything that is five inches and greater. So Elizabeth, if I can get you to do diameters, Josh, I'll have you uh, run distance and asthmus for me. We have to be able to refine this plot in 10 years. So what we're going to do is what we call witness trees. We're going to put a couple of X marks the spots, kind of on two trees that are about 90 degrees, as well as some tagging material. Um, would you have land use of that? Because not only do they check for it, they land use. So when it's really hot, there's a lot of cut down. Forester Elizabeth Corbishley. So we put the base tag down at the very bottom of the tree. Make sure that it faces where our pin is. And the white tag is just a uh, kind of like a flag to say that you're close to the plot. Within this small plot, the team measures all trees larger than five inches in diameter, and with the help of technology, they measure the height also. Very soft, high-pitched sound, and this measures the change in that sound depending on the distance you are from from this piece. It also has a inclinometer inside, and so using some trigonometry, it can tell you how tall the tree is based on how far away you are and how far you tip it up. This witness tree is 38 feet tall. While the crew measures out the plot and marks their witness trees, Matthew is conducting an inventory of the trees within their new plot. Um, overall, from Personal experience, this is a really good, nice, straight tree. So I'm going to give it just a growing stock tree. It's co-dominant, and there's very little to no rot. When the crew is done with this plot, they create a micro plot inside it, looking for seedlings and small trees and cataloging them. And then they repeat the process three more times. The tree that Elizabeth just took a core sample from seemed young but turned out to be 63 <laughs> years old. In the cross timbers, the trees grow very slowly. The foresters are also on the watch for invasive species, some of which were found in this forest near Lake Thunderbird. It was a Chinese Lespedeza. And there's also a multiflora rose, which is another invasive that was kind of along the path. Both of those are fairly common in, you know, touristy uh, areas like this. Oklahoma's oldest tree is in northeastern Oklahoma. It's over 600 years old. 
Many of the forests have trees several hundred years old, and the data the foresters gather also provide experts with another source to track the planet's changing climate.